Good evening, and welcome to this edition of Pillock Talk. My name is Colin Pillock. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, I still can't get over that name. <laughs> it's my great pleasure I'm awfully sorry. to welcome back Reginald Perry, former head of the amazing Grotchop chain. I understand you're now running a community called Perrins, Mr. Perrin. Yes. It's been described as a community for the middle class and the middle age, set in what used to be middle sex. Yes. Uh, tell me, Mr. Perrin, are you running this community for the benefit of humanity, or simply to make money, or is it a giant confidence trick? Yes. <laughs> you confine yourself entirely to this monosyllabic repetition of yes. I know. Oh, good. Because our viewers might think it was rather a waste of time for you to come here and say nothing but yes. Yes. So, which of them is it, Mr. Perrin? A social venture for the benefit of mankind, a purely commercial venture, or a con trick? Yes. It's all three of them. That's the beauty of it. What kind of people come to this community? Well, at the moment, we've got uh, a stockbroker, an overworked doctor, an underworked antique shop owner, a disillusioned imports manager, and an even more disillusioned exports manager. Three sacked football managers, a fortune teller who's going to have a nervous breakdown next April, a school teacher who's desperate because he can't get a job, a school teacher who's even more desperate because he has got a job, an extremely shy vet, an overstressed car salesman, and a pre stressed concrete salesman, people with sexual problems, people with social problems, people with work problems, people with identity problems, people with sexual all social work and identity problems. There are people who live above their garages and above their incomes, in little boxes on prestige estates where families are two-toned, two-car and two-faced. Money has replaced sex as a driving force, death has replaced sex as a taboo, and sex has replaced bridge as a social event for mixed foursomes and large decreases of property, except for 12 sausages. They come to Perrins in the hope that here they won't be ridiculed as petty snobs, but treated as human beings who are bewildered by the complexity of social development, castrated by the conformities of the century of mass production, and dwarfed by the immensity of technological progress that has advanced more in 50 years than in the rest of human existence put together. So that when they take their first tentative steps into an adult society shaped by humans, but not for humans, their personalities shrivel up like private parts in an April sea. <laughs> I, uh, I, I see. Uh, not too monosyllabic for you, I hope. Uh, no, well, thank you, Reginald Perrin. And now the next item on Pillock Talk <laughs> is a... Twenty-two new arrivals this morning, Reggie. Oh, don't so surprised, darling. Your TV appearance must have impressed them. Uh, darling, don't sound so surprised. We fulfil a need. We're a community, but we're respectable and civilised. Oh, yes, we're a kind of therapeutic Cotswolds. Oh, yes, I calculated quite exactly my appeal on television last night, yes. Oh, yes, I should imagine those 22 out there, I know them very, very well indeed. Yes, desperate area reps, disillusioned dentists, menopausal bank managers. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, show the first one, will you, darling? Mr Higgins, would you come this way, please? I'm Glenn Higgins. I'm a mindless liar, ain't I, John? <laughs> Are you? Oh, oh, hello. I'm a bleeding subhuman moron, right? Are you? Oh, well, go, please sit. Uh, oh, you are. Well, good. Hello. <laughs> Saw you on the telly. I thought that's the place for me. Oh, good. Splendid. Marvellous. Because I'm moving in the wrong circles. Know what I mean? Because all me mates is subhuman, mindless yobbos, right? Uh, well, if you say so, yes. Met a bloke outside. Naffin philosopher, right? Uh, yes, we do have a naffing philosopher staying here. <laughs> naffing philosophers don't stab the opposition with knives and break all the windows in their coaches, right? Right. Know why, John? Cos they ain't subhuman, mindless lads. Right. Uh, right. So, I reckon I'll meet the right kind of people here. Right? Ah, you think some of their worldliness and sophistication will rub off on you? Right? Right. Ah. <laughs> Bet you're glad to get a bloke like me for a change. Bit of a challenge, right? Oh, right. <laughs> right, yes. Uh, yes, bit of a test with the community. <laughs> Help me, Mr Perry. Right. <laughs> you send the next one in, please, Herglin. Glenn. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, wrong. <laughs> ah, oh, good morning. Good morning. I'm Everton Johnson. How do you do, Mr Johnson? Please, please, sit down. I saw you on the television last night and I thought, ah, this is the place for me. Well, what's the problem? Uh... It's... It's my job, Mr. Perring, yeah. you know, the, the grinding routine and the, the blank, empty faces and me shouting at them, trying to be heard above the hubbub. Mm. Nobody taking any notice. The, yes. the futility. Yes, I can imagine. Yes, pass right down the cars, please. Oh, yeah. Behind the doors. <laughs> I'm a school teacher. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh. <laughs> oh, excellent. No, it isn't excellent or good. No? Not excellent. And I'm a lousy teacher. Oh. I hate it. Oh, oh, but can I get myself sacked? <laughs> Not on your nelly. They daren't sack a black man. Oh. <laughs> man look, I am really bugged oh. with all this prejudice. Mm. Help me, Mr. Perring. Uh, right. I mean, uh, right. uh, just send the next one in, please, uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Mm. Ah, ah, good morning. Good morning, sir. Please, please sit down. Oh, thank you. Down. Your name, sir? 
Anstruther. Anstruther, A N S T R U T H E. Yes, right. First name? Clive. Clive. Anstruther, help me, Mr. Perrin. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Anstruther, we will. Now, what exactly is the problem? Oh, sucker. Oh. Absolute sucker. <laughs> oh, always being taken for a ride. Yeah. Dud check going round comes my way every time. Yes, I know the time. Right. Well, we have these little group sessions, you see, where we discuss problems openly, and we'll soon be able to discover exactly why it is you're... you're... Anstruther? Clive Anstruther. Clive Lofty Anstruther. Yes. Not the swine who formed a secret right-wing army with Jimmy and then ran off with all the money and the ammo. Yeah. <laughs> Bad business, on my conscience. All right, I'll come clear. Real reason I'm here, I'm a rotten egg, want to turn over a new leaf. Saw you on the goggle box, thought, Anstruther, you swine, you pimple on mankind's backside. <laughs> That's the place for you. Ah, oh, jolly good, splendid, marvellous lofty. <laughs> like to see Jimmy sometime again. Apologise. <laughs> Not very likely, I suppose. No, quite likely, yes. <laughs> he works here. Oh, does he? Yes, you'll be able to see him tonight. Oh, good. <laughs> Splendid. Marvellous. <laughs> yes. Next! Hello, Mr. Perry. My name is Deborah Swaffham. Help me. <laughs> uh, Reggie. Uh, cheers, Jimmy. Cheers. Jimmy, would you say you were a charitable, forgiving sort of chap? Or other cheek, moat and beam, that sort of crack. Yes. Every time, Reggie, every time. Ah, oh, good, good, because I've asked you here tonight to leave Clive Lofty Anstruther. That bastard. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Faith and trust, moat and beam, other cheek. Uh, no, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. The community faces its greatest challenge, and this is its greatest test to date. This is the big one, Jimmy. This is your Everest and, uh, and mine. Message received and understood. Yeah. Got to be nice to him, because... Because he's here. <laughs> Jimmy? Anstruther. What do you have? Large whiskey. <clears throat> Same for Reggie. Oh, bastard. <laughs> Everest. All right. But just don't expect me to call him Lofty. Right. Uh, well, uh, cheers. 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 <clears throat> Jimmy. Yes? That business. Rifles, money and so forth. Rotten show. Rotten <laughs> show. Oh, well. Water under the bridge, Amstruther. Pretended to be Colonel. Wasn't. Never even in army. You <laughs> Oh, well. Can't all be. Funny old world if everyone in army. Nobody to wave goodbye. <laughs> Not a fighter. Yellow streak. Bad luck. Drew a lousy hand, that's all. All the other babies, two hearts, three no trumps, that sort of crack. You, no bid. <laughs> Cock up on character front. <laughs> Not your fault, you're a lousy, rotten, stinking, yellow, thieving swine. Thanks. Ah, well done, Jimmy. The community has passed his greatest test. Same again. Lofty. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Jolly good. Well, the world is wending its way to our doors. Super. Yes. Knock out. Credit in mind, it's all yours. Because you all learn to live and work and think as a team. Well, well, I I certainly certainly have. Have. <laughs> you certainly have. It's been an absolutely amazing success. But new challenges require new ideas. Been thinking, Reggie. As I say, it's been an amazing success. <laughs> Take fight to opposition. Botchley terrorised by crime wave, set up anti-vandalism squads. Keep streets clear of louts, muggers and subhuman filth. Heron's peacekeeping force. That's an absolutely splendid idea, Jimmy. Nice smart uniforms, large wooden clubs. Yes. <laughs> large wooden clubs. Mm. <laughs> Talk to them, only language they understand. Oh, no, 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 no. The idea is excellent, Jimmy, but no, but no violence. No violence? No, no. With you. Good thing, too. Oh, I mean, fighting for peace is like, uh, like making love for virginity. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a very good idea. We'll certainly try it out. But uh, wooden clubs. I have an idea as well. What would you say is the British disease? Strike. Incompetence. Bronchitis. Homosexuality. Uh, uh, tea breaks. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's all of those. Yes, but one other. Self-consciousness. Now, I want this month to be Perrin's anti-self-consciousness month. I want us to teach everybody to behave ridiculously and not to feel ashamed of doing it. All right? Now, has anybody got any totally ridiculous ideas? I've got another idea for taking the aggression out of sport. But unfortunately, it isn't even remotely ridiculous. Oh, come on, tell them what it is. <laughs> Solo tennis. Playing with oneself. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Not only is it totally ridiculous, it's absolutely ludicrous. Well done, Tom. Wouldn't you have to keep going the other end to get your balls back? <laughs> There's a simple solution to that. A load of balls. Absolutely. Well done again, Tom. We'll try that. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes and little children. 
I've got a ridiculous idea, Reggie, to defeat the self-consciousness of the long-distance commuter. As we don't mind what the other people in the compartment think of us, we travel as ordinary commuters, but hold absolutely ridiculous conversations. Ah, now what sort of ridiculous conversations do you have in mind, CJ? Well, something simple to get it off the ground. Let me see now, off the top of the head, run it up the flagpole, see if the rats desert a sinking ship. <laughs> How about ending words with Urgle? Oh, this is absolutely <laughs> splendid thinking, CJ. Thank you, Urgle. <laughs> Soup, Urgle. <laughs> Knock out Urgle. <laughs> there we go. Well, we give it a Urgle. <laughs> Eleven minutes late, Urgle. Tip a gurgle. Uh, derail rolling struggle at Wimble Urgle, I imagine, Urgle. <laughs> Not a bad morning, Urgle. A bit cold, Urgle. Enough to freeze the burgles off a brass monk, Urgle. That's all, Urgle, Glen Urgle. Looks like rain, Urgle. Or even snow, Urgle. I didn't gurgle where I am to Durgle without recognising a Murgle that looks like snow when I see you one. It's one way getting all the seats. Absolutely. Oh, that's all right. You can stop now. They've all gone. Oh, oh no. no! Let's just stop. stop. Oh, oh, let's try the fun. Oh my gurgle. <laughs> Understood. Oh, hello, uh, Reggie. Hello, hello. We're trying to break down self-consciousness about, um... Sex. Uh, exactly. Yes, yes. We're having a game of, um, <laughs> sexual just a minute. Yes. Everyone has to speak for 60 seconds about some aspect of, um... Sex. Uh, exactly. Yes. Without repetition, hesitation or deviation. Good. Uh, Mr. Johnson told us about his first sexual experiences. Uh, he was buzzed after 14 seconds for... Uh, Repetition. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an extremely shy vet was buzzed after two seconds for... Um, Hesitation. Exactly. <laughs> Deborah Swatham talked about her affair with an electronics engineer in Geneva. He was buzzed straight away for deviation, quite. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn managed to speak for a whole minute about... Uh, a knee trembler in a back alley in Oxford, didn't I? <laughs> exactly. Super. And our police superintendent also spoke for a whole minute about, um... My missus. Uh, exactly. Super, super. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a photograph of her here. She's a dead ringer for Kim Novak. Yeah. She's... Yeah. I've been robbed. Someone's nicked 15 quid from my wallet. Are you absolutely sure? Oh, no, 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 I'm sure. No, no, there's nobody here in the community would take anything. I lost ten pounds yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? I lost ten pounds yesterday. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? I did. But nobody heard me. Oh. <laughs> you want to call the police? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a petty thief in our midst. Two cases have been reported. Uh, three. I lost ten pounds as uh, well. All right. Three cases. Uh, four. Lost fifteen pounds and my watch. Uh, all right. Four cases. Flavel. Very well, McLean. Five cases. <laughs> Clegg <Claire> Lagunges. <laughs> How distressing for you. <laughs> But are we to put at risk everything we have built up here so painstakingly, merely for £50, pounds, a, a kleggle of gunges and a watch? Digital. The community is built on faith and trust. I therefore propose to take no further action at this stage except to say to this unhappy person, the unhappy person, please cease your crimes, ease your conscience by handing back the £50. Pounds. And my digital watch. And the kleggle of gunges. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there have been more thefts, but we must not panic. This is a testing time for parents. We must put this criminal to shame and illustrate the power of the community by one supreme act of faith and trust. Please, all of you, leave your valuables lying around tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last night, 382 pounds, four watches, <laughs> three rings, and two bracelets were stolen. <laughs> Help me nail the sod. <laughs> Dear Mr. Perrin, I'm sorry I left without warning. It was the thefts. Is there to be crime everywhere I go? Yours sincerely, Superintendent Potts. Oh, oh darling, listen, another one. Dear Mr. Perrin, I'm sorry I left without telling you it was the thefts. And also I felt I wasn't conquering my shyness as quickly as I'd hoped. Yours sincerely, A.B. Mewling, brackets, shy vet, brackets. <laughs> Reggie, I committed those thefts. Oh, darling, why didn't you say it? No, oh. you, it's you. Don't try to find me. No use. Took £1,100, four watches, three rings, two bracelets and Jimmy's medals. Sorry, Clive Lofty Anstruther. 
P.S. also took the 12 Klegel of Gunges. Ah, bastard! <laughs> Ain't guess left because of those Klegel of Gunges, that long streak of... Reggie! Forget it and move on to new triumphs. Yes, you're absolutely right, darling. Let's forget it and move on to new triumphs. Mm. Right, let's hit the culture. Score some more with Anthony and Cleopatra. And remember, it's anti-self-consciousness month, so uh, let it all hang out. <laughs> Bash the bard. He's the kiddie. Oh, uh, could I just ask you one question? Mm. How do you think Cleopatra would have kissed? I really don't know. How do you think she would have kissed? Well... <sighs> maybe, um... Maybe you better show me. <laughs> yes, uh, I think she probably would have kissed very much like that. <clears throat> Knock out. I couldn't have kissed like that as Deborah Swarf. I was just being the sultry queen of the Nile. I'm very inhibited as me. If you were to come to my room and things when I was me, I wouldn't be like that. Um, but you wouldn't want to. Well, how do you know? Well, I, I have this, this frigid element, you know, and I, I sort of turn men off and things. Rubbish. I mean, if you were to come to my room during dinner this evening, because food is pretty draggy, isn't it? <laughs> Food is Dullsville, Arizona. <laughs> this evening, perhaps you could try and help me to get over these inhibitions of mine. I could try. <clears throat> Deborah. <laughs> well played, Deborah. You've got good distribution. Thanks. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I nearly fell over. I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I know that I'm not the sort of girl to uh, turn men on and things. You are. No, I, I have this distancing effect which shrivels the male libido. I assure you, my libido isn't shriveled. <laughs> come to my room during dinner tonight. Unless, of course, you don't find me exciting enough to miss your food. I'm not a food person. I praised you all in this very room. And, well, not in this very room, in that room. But now we're in this very room because I'm very cross, and this is a very much better room for being very cross in. <laughs> Why am I cross? Because there has been a sad decline in morale. Now, these things must be nipped in the bud. So that is what this meeting is for, to find out which buds, how they should be nipped, and, and, and in what. And, and with what. <laughs> so I'd like each of you to give me a firm idea how they would improve morale. Who wants to start? Get rid of Deborah Swatham. Oh, is she the one with the big gun? Yes. yes. <laughs> I hadn't really noticed her. <laughs> Would you like to give me your reason, CJ? Certainly. When I do a job, Reggie, I do it properly. I'm not a man to spoil the ship for a haperth of spilt milk. <laughs> so when one evening Miss Swatham proposed to me that we should have an extra mural role-playing session, I heard the trumpet call of duty. And we had an extra mural role-playing session. Uh, what roles did you play, CJ? Mothers and fathers. <laughs> no mistake, Reggie. I didn't get where I am today by playing mothers and fathers. Still, never mind, out of the mouths of babes and little children. Mm -hmm. She was playing the mother, by the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> she took off her clothes. It's been a long time, Reggie, and I... <laughs> I forgot myself. You forgot yourself? Sir. Forgot. She hit me. We dressed in angry silence. Oh, oh, we, we. So you'd got undressed as well. She was shy of undressing. She said she had an unsexy body. I said, you haven't seen mine. <laughs> She said it might help her if she did. She did. It didn't. Well, that just goes to show how we should leave all medical matters like this to the doc. Uh, uh no. Mm. Uh, <laughs> she got on the couch. She seemed so tense and vulnerable. Mm. I only put my arm around her. Where were you, doc? Oh, I was on the couch as well. Mm. <laughs> I didn't want to be in an analyst-patient situation. I thought it would be better to be in a patient-patient situation. I'm afraid I uh, forgot myself as well. Been even longer. She hit me. I, I fell off the couch. <laughs> Twisted my... Still very painful. Single to the terminus. What? What? 
Sorry, I must have nodded off. Thought I was on holiday. Malta. Bus ride. Now, sir, bus is green. Interesting ticket system. Sorry. Not sleeping well. This business lofty, taking both my medals. Morale shot to pieces. What's meeting all about? Rather miss that bit. Low morale, Jimmy. Ah. Mm. Treacherous chap, low morale. Yeah. Depressing sort of code. Absolutely. Now, Doc, can we hear your idea of improving morale, please? Get rid of Deborah Swafford. <laughs> now, can we please move on from Deborah Swafford? Here, here. She's bad news, City, Arizona, that one. I mean, I went to his room. Carl wasn't even there. Oh, you two. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, <laughs> you two to tootled off to a room and she wasn't even there. <laughs> Time. You pretended it was ill and didn't want any dinner. It's pathetic. Oh, so that's why you oh, said you were no, ill. No, but oh. you as well, Tom. My God, parents. It's more like Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> I went to her room to discuss tactics. That's all. Nothing happened. No, she wasn't there, you poor sap. She wasn't there. Please! up! Now, I broke in the gavel. Symbolic moment. Perrins is finished. Utopia kaput. Panacea for all mankind. Stuff it. I'm disgusted with you all. Have we nothing better to do than insult one another? Exactly. Out of the mouths of babes and little children. Oh, stop saying that. It's meaningless, you stupid fool. Is <laughs> <laughs> our wonderful community to collapse because of a few petty thefts and a mixed-up woman who makes a fool of all the men? Problems are what we're here to deal with, for goodness sake. Deborah Swaffham should see the sex therapist. It's what he's here for. We must fight back and reveal these setbacks for what they are. Pinpricks. So cheer up. Things could be worse. And now let's have some sensible suggestions. That's right. Sensible suggestions. Thank you very much, darling. What a sensible suggestion. Now, come on. Let's have some sensible suggestions. Well, why don't you have Red Rovers, you stupid Maltese fool? <laughs> Please, try to look on me not as a sex therapist. But as a man. <laughs> I'll try. I, I didn't mean to be frightened by all those men. But they give off an aura of sexual aggression. Tony and DJ and things. CJ. Oh, I, I, I'm hopeless with names. I, I don't think I'd be frightened with you. I bet that you don't give off an aura of sexual aggression. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> I bet that you are all helpless and inadequate and oh, cuddly and things. Oh, thank you very much. Super. <laughs> Why don't you come to my room at lunchtime and teach me not to be frightened? Well, I, um... I, um... <laughs> thank you very much, Super. <laughs> No, 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 Deborah, no, no, Deborah, you must, you must stop this. No, no, Prue, Prue has left David and gone back to her mother. No, 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 don't, give me, give, give, no, give me that key. Come along, come on, give, Deborah, give me that key immediately. If you think you're going to try and confuse me like this, you're making a very, very big mistake. Come on, come on, take that key out of the key, bitch. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm not going to come and get it at all. I don't want it. I mean, I don't want that. I want the key. No, come, no, I Deborah, was really no, frightened of all those Deborah, men. It was please. just a ruse to get you up no, Deborah, there no, because no, you are the man with the power and no, the no, power please, no. turns me on. No, no, please, Deborah, now this is absolutely oh, ridiculous. You don't no, find me attractive. No, no, I do. I find no, it absolutely, I do. I find it gorgeous, absolutely resistible. But 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 I'm a, <laughs> but I've thought of something you haven't thought of. You won't give me the key. I'll go out of the window. It's not the first time I've done this, you know. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, had you? Hey. Bye bye, Deborah. <laughs> I need a doctor. Well, I am a doctor. No, no. <laughs> faith and doctor. trust, Reggie. Where's oh, your faith ha. and trust? Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. You need a doctor. <laughs> oh, darling, I'm bruised all over. I'm sure I've broken something. Oh, darling, everything's going wrong. Prue's left. David, eight guests have left. Oh, suddenly everything is chaos. Well, Reggie, mm. there's one consolation. Things what? couldn't get worse. Come back. Lost all the money, dud horse. Had to pawn Jimmy's medals. Rotten through and through. Help me, Reggie. Yeah! 